Hello everyone. Here is our next question from the subject computer organization from the topic instruction pipelining and this question was asked in the year 2014 in set 3 for 2 marks. The question is an instruction pipeline has 5 stages namely instruction fetch, instruction decode raised and register fetch, instruction execution, memory access and register write back with stage latencies 1 nanosecond, 2.2 nanosecond, 2 nanosecond, 1 nanosecond and 0.75 nanosecond respectively and it stands for nanoseconds. To gain in terms of frequency the designer have decided to split the IDRF stage that is instruction decode and register fetch stage into three stages ID, RF1, RF2 each of latency 2.2 divided by 3 nanoseconds. Also the execute stage is split into two stages execute 1, execute 2 each of latency 1 nanosecond. The new design has total 8 pipeline stages. A program has 20% branch instructions which execute in the EX stage and produce the next instruction pointer at the end of EX stage in the old design and at the end of EX2 stage in the new design. The instruction fetch uh, stage stalls after the fetching after fetching a branch instruction until the next instruction pointer is computed. All instructions other than branch instruction have an average CPI of 1 in both the designs. The execution times of this program on the old and the new design are P and Q nanoseconds respectively. The value of P by Q is. So this is a huge question but the solution to it is quite simple if the fundamentals are known. So first of all uh, let us uh, talk about the formula for uh, calculating execution time of a program. So execution time of a program can be calculated by this formula. So let me write the formula here. Execution time of a program. So let it be execution time of a program is equals to uh, the cycles per instruction of the program. So what is cycles per instruction? This is a measure of number of cycles required number of clock cycles required for a new instruction to complete on an average. Right? So number of clock cycles required for a new instruction to complete on an average is CPI. Now with that if you multiply number of instructions of the program number of instructions of the program then what we would get is the number of cycles required number of clock cycles required to uh, execute the program. Now to get the time of the execution of the program we need to multiply this value with time period of clock cycle. So this has to be multiplied by time period of clock cycle. Right, so cycles per instruction into number of instructions in the program would give us number of clock cycles required to execute the program. With that, if we multiply time period of a clock cycle, we would get total time of execution of a program. Now, this has to be found for both uh, old design and new design that we have talked about in the question, and then the ratio has to be found out. Right, so uh, if P is the execution time of uh, the program in old design and uh, Q is the execution time of the program in new design, then P by Q can be given as let us call uh, the CPI of the old design as CPI1. And number of instructions as we are finding a ratio and number of instruction of a program would remain same. So this would cancel out from numerator and denominator, right? So I would not, ju I would just skip it. The time period of the old design can be designated as T1, 
whereas CPI2 is the cycles per instruction of the new design and T2 let it be time period of the clock cycle in new design. So this is the ratio we need to find out and for knowing the ratio we need to find out the values of each of this uh, expressions that is T1, T2, CPI1 and CPI2. Now how to calculate time period in case of old design and new design. So the fundamental would, uh, that would be applied here is that the time period of a pipeline processor is determined by the highest stage latency. So here in case of old design the highest stage latency is 2.2 nanosecond right. So the time period of the clock would be 2.2 nanosecond and why the time period would be kept as 2.2 nanosecond is that uh, the time period of the clock cycle should be um, should be uh, big enough so that all the stages can complete successfully. So if we keep the time period as 2.2 nanosecond as all the stages have lesser stage latency they would be able to complete their work successfully. So the time period in the case of old design would be equals to 2.2 nanosecond. Let me write it here T1 equals to 2.2 nanosecond whereas T2 let us read this out and we would be able to find out which one of the stages has uh, highest uh, uh, stage latency. So here if you see the uh, stage IF that is instruction fetch has got one nan nanosecond stage latency even in the new design and uh, this ID RF1 and RF2 has a stage latency of 2.2 divided by 3 that, uh, that is a value which would be less than 1 and the execute 1 executes 2 stages would have uh, 1 nanosecond la latency and the last stage the right back stage has a latency of 0.75 nanosecond. So the highest stage latency here is 1 nanosecond so T2 would be equals to 1 nanosecond. So we are done with calculating time periods of the old design and the new design. Now let us talk about the CPI that would be required in case of old design and the CPI uh, that would be required in the new design. So ideally in a pipeline processor the CPI uh, that would be required is 1. Why? Because if the pipeline is ideal then there would be no stalls in the pipeline and a new instruction would always be able to complete in one more cycle after the previous instruction. So when an instruction is at this stage and instruction in the pipeline is the next instruction would be here right so i2 if i1 is at right back stage i2 would be at memory stage and i3 uh, next instruction would be an execute stage and if there are no stalls when i1 completes to the right completes the right back stage and it leaves the pipeline so when i1 is completed i2 would be here and right after one cycle of completion of i1 i2 would also get completed so a new instruction would always require one more cycle after the completion of the previous instruction. So every clock cycle we would find an instruction to get completed and leaving the pipeline. So the cycles on an average that would be required for completion of a new instruction would always be equals to 1. But here it is given that because of existence of branch instruction the pipeline is uh, not ideal and there are stalls in the pipeline. So here it is given uh, that a program has 20% branch instructions which execute in EX stage and produce the next instruction pointer at the end of EX stage in the old design and at the end of EX2 stage in the new design. So what is a branch instruction and how does it execute? Let us uh, um, write down a typical program with a branch instruction. So let's say this is a label and we have some sort of instructions here R1 
comma r2 and there are several such instructions here and at the end of this loop we have a decrement r3 register and then we are having a branch instruction branch on not zero that means till the value of r3 is not becoming zero we would branch to this loop sorry here we should have loop so until and unless the r3's value uh, gets decremented to zero we would keep looping in this uh, in this loop and only after the r3 becomes zero we would come out of the loop and we would uh, execute the next instruction so let's say we have another add instruction here right so if r3's value is not zero then we would branch to this instruction that means the next instruction after the branch instruction that would get executed if r3's value is not zero would be this and when r3's value becomes zero the next instruction that would be executed is this so when we are executing branch instruction we don't know which one would be the next instruction that should be executed so in this processors those are in the question it is said till the branch instruction completes its execute stage ex stage in case of old design and ex2 stage in case of new design it is not known that which one would be the next instruction whether it would be the uh, physically next instruction or whether it would be the um, the instruction which is at the target location of the branch that is this instruction so that is not known till the branch instruction completes its execute stage ex stage in case of old design and ex2 stage in case of new design so only after uh, this execute stages are completed in a new design and old design uh, we get to know that which is the next instruction that has to be executed and after that instruction fetch unit starts fetching that particular instruction that has to be executed so there would be definitely stall still uh, till the branch instruction is in the pipeline and it has completed its execute stage the instruction fetch unit and the instruction decode unit would remain idle so ideally if it is not an um, a branch instruction an instruction would take an extra cycle after completion of its previous instruction whereas in case of uh, branch instruction what would happen is let's say ib is a branch instruction and after execute stage so when it has entered into the pipeline uh, and it's progressing through the pipeline this stages are kept idle because instruction fetch uh, would not fetch anything further before it is known known that which one would be the next instruction that has to be executed so after execute stage of the branch instruction only when the branch instruction reaches the memory stage where it would not do anything um, special or, or useful but it has to be uh, it has to come to the stage at least because it has entered into the pipeline so when a branch instruction would reach memory stage a new instruction would be fetched here so had it not been a branch instruction uh, this instruction this uh, next instruction would have been right behind uh, it in the pipeline but now there is a gap of three stages so ideally there should have been a gap of one stage now because this is a branch instruction until it reaches memory stage it would not reach instruction fetch stage so there is a gap of three uh, stages right and when this branch instruct instruction gets completed and leaves the pipeline this instruction would still take three more cycles to get completed and leave the pipeline so had it not been a branch instruction the instruction would have taken the instruction the next instruction would have taken one cycle one extra cycle 
to get completed after the instruction after the previous instruction is completed whereas in case of branch instruction the next instruction would take three extra cycles three extra cycles to get completed after the branch instruction is completed that means uh, the average CPI in case of the old design would be found like this so let me go to the next uh, page and uh, the branch instruction number of branch instruction is 20 percent in case of uh, so in the program that is executed so 20 percent is 20 by 100 and in case of branch instruction the next instruction that would uh, require uh, three cycles to get completed after the branch instruction is complete whereas if the instruction is not a branch instruction then the next instruction would require just a one cycle so there are 80 percent such instructions which are not branch instruction so on an average the instructions which precede the non-branch instruction would require one more cycle to get completed so in all the cpi of the old design would be this so 20 percent of three and 80 percent of one so now if you solve it it would be so it is 0 0.8 here and here we have 0 0.6 so the cpi requirement of the old design is 1.4 now let us apply the same logic in case of new design so in case of new design till the branch instruction reaches memory stage a new instruction would not be first and only when the branch instruction is at memory stage and it has completed ex2 stage the new instruction would be started to be first so the gap between instruction branch instruction and the new instruction which gets phased after branch instruction is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 6 so only after 6 cycles after the completion of branch instruction the new instruction would get completed so for this instruction which is just next after the branch instruction the cycles required is 6 so let us designate it as cpi1 as we have done earlier and the cpi for new design is cpi2 so for 20 percent of the instructions which has which are branch instructions the next instruction would require six cycles whereas for other instructions that is 80 percent of the instructions in the program the next instruction would require just one cycle to get completed so the overall cpi would be the solution of this exp is uh, this uh, value this expression and here it would be 0 0.2 into 6 plus 0.8 so 0 0.2 into 6 is 1.2 that is 2 so the cpi2 that is the cycles per instruction of the new design is 2 right so if we keep the values if we put the values of the um, of this figures in here then we would get the ratio so cpi1 as we have calculated is 1.4 and t1 is 2.2 nanosecond whereas cpi2 is 2 and t2 is 1 nanosecond so 2 1.4 is 0 0.7 7 to the 14 1 in hand 7 to the 14 and 1 15 and there are two digits after decimal so it would be 1.4 1.54 so here is the decimal point 1.54 so this is the answer so here the fill in the blanks would be filled up with 1.54 so hope you have understood the logic behind choosing 1.5 as 54 as the answer thanks for watching bye